Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this part of the world. Welcome to another session of my presentation series. And this time, the topic is uh, electrical power generation utilizing biomass energy. My good name is John Kweku Amoto, and I've been a professional electrical engineer for the past 31 years, and I've practiced as an electrical engineer for the past 31 years in the United States of America, and I live in the US as well. Now, let's talk about some logistics here. Um, below this is the name of my YouTube channel, Work and Happiness, Talking to the Engineer. Right? Okay, so this YouTube channel has uh, tons and tons of presentation materials that is ideal and good for the young engineer that is about to start your career for the mid-career engineer, for the experienced engineer, for the consulting engineer, and uh, for the consulting engineer, for the experienced engineer, this can be a refresher for you. Okay, so. You can subscribe to this channel, but before you can subscribe, you need a Gmail account, which is a Google account. Then, if you like my presentation, don't forget to select the like button. Then, don't forget to share, 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 share. Okay, so, this slide I, I did talk about it, uh, in the previous slide, and uh, this is the name of my YouTube channel. It has uh, a lot of presentation materials, and... For you to be able to subscribe, you need a Google account in Gmail. Okay. Then you can fully subscribe to it and any other channel in YouTube. If you like my presentation, don't forget to select the uh, like button. Then don't forget to share, share, share. Now let's talk about the basics of biomass energy, right? Okay, so as you can see in this picture, that's a pile of trash, right? That has been basically compacted and uh, put in bundles you know i remember you know uh, when we were younger you know um, used uh, clothing used to be put in bundles like that and shipped all the way to africa you know usually those times when we were younger those, those were the times that you know uh, if you want uh, something westernized uh, you know apart from the ones that are uh, you know uh, you can buy and uh, basically material and sew it yourself uh, in Ghana, you know, sometimes you fill the edge uh, to basically put on western lines up there. So those are the times that, uh, you know, we go for used clothing, you know, and this used clothing come in bottles like that, you know, where they've been compacted and uh, basically shipped all the way, you know, for sale. In Ghana. Okay. So similarly, this uh, um, used, uh, uh, this trash has been compacted and uh, formed in bundles and these are shipped to power plants that utilizes this as a fuel so basically this goes into boilers right okay so uh they basically put them on conveyors and uh basically just like coal you know i think that one of my uh, previous presentation i made mention of how electrical energy is generated utilizing coal as a source of energy so similarly this compacted trash is used as a source of energy for the boiler right and compact metalizer when it is compact put in compact is to make it very heavy for it uh, to basically gain the when it burns basically you know the amount of energy can be high right? okay so basically it flows into the boiler and uh, but the boiler has uh, basically burns right that burns this uh, trash and uh, basically it's uh, the thermal energy from the trash is basically um, uh, sent to the piping, you know, all, um, all around the, the boiler it has uh, piping all all around, right? That has a closed loop water that flows through it. Okay, so uh, the thermal energy in this uh, trash that is burned is basically transferred into those piping uh, that has uh, cooling water, right? So the cooling water that is in the piping that is formed all around basically the piping is goes all, all, all around the peripheral surface of the boiler right so the cooling water gains that energy and basically forms into steam this steam becomes like 60 to 70 percent dry steam and about 30 percent saturation okay so 30 percent of it is, is in the form of uh, um, waterized uh, you know composition of uh, not dry steam right okay so the dry steam basically you know rises up and uh, it goes through a reheat section 
what where basically you know another means of uh, heating you know usually they utilize uh, the heat from um, the exhaust uh, that basically goes out into the atmosphere you know there's a there's a tower that right there flue gas they call it flue gas right flue gas from the basically burning of uh, this trash right okay so part of uh, you know the heat from the flue gas is taken and basically fed through the reheated heater pendants so the, this reheater pipes are you know are basically mounted in the form of pendants right so you have the reheater pendants then you have the superheater pendants right okay so um as uh, the steam flows into this uh, reheater uh, pipes right okay you have a uh, uh, basically heat that has been harvested from the flue gas that is being and sent to the atmosphere right so basically it's more of a creating more efficiency in the steam cycle in the power plant cycle okay so that heat is used to re, uh, reheat uh, this uh, steam that is generated from this uh, burning of uh, uh, this trash and this trash that the thermal energy is transferred to the water to create steam right okay so from here then basically the water flows to the superheated pendants right so these pendants are basically piping that hangs all the way to the roof of the boiler, right? And I basically I've worked in the coal power plant, and basically I have experience uh, basically you know with all these uh you know inside the boiler because those were the times that you know I used to basically you know crawl through uh, the boilers, and, you know basically you know doing outages to clean and uh, and the boilers and get them ready for the next uh, cycle of power generation. Okay, so. Um, as uh, the steam flows into the superheater um, pen, uh, pendants, uh, right, piping, it's about, I'll say, about 90% dry, right? Then from here, it flows uh, through very huge piping that goes to uh, the turbine section to be basically uh, impinges on uh, the turbine blades and basically causes a rotation of uh, energy. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, different types of biomass, right? Okay, so um think about it you have a landfill right and you have all sort of trash you know that comes from every household every industrial facility every commercial facility every part of a community you know if a community has a or a county has a you know a landfill right okay so it consists of wood consists of crops crops are basically you know um basically are harvested and basically you know the uh, waste from uh, the crops are basically you know especially corn right the husk and all those things are all put together and transported into these uh, land, land, landfills right you have garbage that comes from the household right then you have other other fuels then when the, basically this um, land uh, trash or other you know types of biomass are basically sent to this uh, uh, landfills right it stays there for years, sometimes five to ten years, right? So, basically, based on uh, that, you know, it being in basically there for that number of years, it generates uh, methane gas, right? Methane gas, right? So, it means that methane gas can be recovered from this. Um, landfill that is filled with trash and that methane gas can be used for power generation right can be used as a gas okay so you see you see you see you see the optimization that is here right and the benefits right you know the trash that uh you know you don't you don't respect right uh, you know if you go to third world countries right trash it's dumped everywhere but in the western world they are making use of trash to generate electrical power, to generate heating for homes, right? So, as you can see in this picture, right, you have all the uh, landfill that is filled with trash, right? And basically, it's piled there, you know? They dump it, they dump it for 10 years. Uh, whatever. Uh, uh, I remember, you know, when we were young, uh, you know, the neighborhood, uh, certain neighborhoods that, you know, uh, we, used to, we used to live in, the trash used to be piled for, let's say, more than 10 years. So think about it, the amount of gassing that is going to generate, right? And that gassing, you can put piping into this landfill to basically harvest and recover methane gas. And you can use that methane gas for 
for healing, for cooking, for the power generation. Right. Okay, so now this beautiful picture basically talks about um, one of the European countries where basically this trash that you dump is dumped into landfills, right? That trash is basically, you know, uh, like I showed you the picture of it, you know, it is basically put into bundles, compacted, right? And it is sent into uh, facilities where our uh, materials are added and basically it is formed into this composition to be sent to the power plant, to into the boiler, to be burned to generate electrical energy. Next is another um, uh, form of a biomass, and this is corn, right? Okay, so as you can see, ethanol can be generated from corn, right? And also the leaves, the dry leaves and the husk from the corn can also be used as a fuel for the boiler as a form of biomass energy. So you, you see that you know we can generate or we can have two forms of um, energy here. We can have ethanol, right? So some of the gasoline, right, like um, unleaded gasoline, has about 10 to 15 percent composition of ethanol gas. Mm -hmm. So that is blended, you know, to make first of all the cost lower, right, and also to basically limit the amount of pollution after combusting into the atmosphere, right? So it's a way of limiting the amount of carbon dioxide and other pollutants that are emitted into the atmosphere, right? So we are utilizing the ethanol that is generated from corn, right? The corn is ground into fine powder. Then basically it goes through, you know, it's uh, sugar is added and basically from there, it just you know uh, the ethanol is you know achieved through an industrialized uh, process. Now let's talk about another form of uh, biomass energy. That is uh, basically timber or big you know tall woods, right? Okay, as you can see over here, um, if they decided to uh, use uh, the wood, right? Okay, so. Outside the, uh, the, the wood, right, you have uh, basically other um, covers that basically covers the wood. So that cover is removed, right, to make use of this inner section of the wood. And that is what you see in uh, basically it is um, basically processed into different types of shapes of wood for you to be used for car making carbonates, etc. Right. But the, uh, the products of all those uh, shavings uh, from these uh, trees, right? Basically, it's uh, put together and compacted and sent to the power plant and basically fed into the boiler to be burned to generate electrical energy. Okay, I think I did show you this, uh, this picture before, you know, this basically was it's a picture that uh, basically was produced uh, by a company that, that is based in um, Europe, right? And what they did was that uh, they utilized a uh, compacted trash, right? And I showed you a picture of well, how the trash uh, looked like. So the trash that you dumped there for many years, it is basically compacted together and other uh, basically renewable um, sources of uh, um, chemicals are added to create this means of uh, energy and that is basically fed into the boiler in the power plant to create that thermal energy and that thermal energy is, uh, tra is transferred to um, a cooling pipe that flows in the post uh, piping and now uh, to generate uh, the steam that is required and uh, the steam basically rises up and goes through the reheater and from the reheater it goes through the superheater to get the steam as dry as much as possible about 90% Okay, so next picture is uh, basically, you know, the byproducts of uh, basic agriculture, you know, and uh, basically, you know, as you, you see over there, you have a uh, corn, you have different corns, uh, you know, soybean and all those things, right? So the byproducts, you know, that is uh, the leaves and all, all those uh, 
after harvesting all those um, pro, um, pieces uh, that are left are all compacted to the area and basically brought into this facility and basically put into this incinerator over here right and other chemicals are added basically to generate methane gas and that methane gas can be used for the problem to basically create a combustion and a generate electrical energy okay so the picture that i showed you right in the previous slide right okay so that is a generating methane gas right okay so you have, you've generated a methane gas that methane gas can be piped into these two generators that are located over here right to generate the electrical energy so think about it you can generate a methane gas uh, from basically this uh, um, chemical process uh, that is basically consists of utilizing uh, the after products of agriculture that is after harvesting and all those um, uh, byproducts that are left in the fields right the leaves and all etc the dry leaves and all those things right basically it is sent into an incinerator and other products are added to create the methane gas you can also create a um, harvest the methane gas from uh, a landfill if you have a you know basically piles and piles of trash you know that is there for let's say five to ten years what happens you know it basically starts generating methane gas and you can put in the necessary infrastructure you can put in the necessary piping and uh other pumps and all those things uh, to basically generate your methane gas then you can pipe it to uh, a combustion turbine facility to generate electric power okay so now let's talk about the steam turbine okay you have the steam turbine right and uh, basically you have different section of the steam turbine right so this side is the high pressure section okay so remember that you know i indicated that if this is the boiler right you have burners that goes all around the, the, the boiler right you can have about 20 to 30 burners depending on how large the size the power plant is right okay so you have your trash compacted trash that is basically flows in the form of a you know a, a conveyor right and uh, basically before it comes here it's basically um it's been ground uh, further to get you know it in a much more granular shape right before it gets into this burner to burn it and once it burns it you have a uh, water that flows in a cooling cycle close loop cycle basically the water flows from a river that is in close proximity to the power plant right through this boiler right so this boiler has a uh, piping all around many tubes that you know basically are uh, wound uh, around the peripheral surface of the boiler right so as the thermal energy from the combustion uh, process is transferred to the water that flows in the tubes right it creates steam and the steam basically rises up remember the dry part of the steam is about 70 percent dry and 30 percent right so the 30 percent basically stays here to basically uh wait for additional heating you know additional heating to evolve into steam right so since uh the drier part of the steam is lighter it rises up into the reheater pendant right so it goes in here and uh this reheater pendant is in the middle section of the boiler right so that reheater section basically utilizes uh, additional heating from the flue gas that is being emitted into the atmosphere, right? Right? The flue gas has sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and has latent heat, embedded heat in it, right? Okay, so as part of uh, uh, improving the process of the power plant cycle, that latent heat in the flue gas is harvested, right? And brought here to reheat the steam that flows in this reheating um, piping. Then from here, it goes into a superheated piping, right? 
So the superheater piping also has another form, form of uh, uh, basically uh, energy that is harvested from another section of uh, uh, the electrostatic precipitator. You know, there's something called electrostatic precipitator, ESP, right? Where the flue gas basically flows, where basically based on positive and negative, you know, uh, anode cathode, basically, you know, the ash that comes out of uh, the flue gas is basically attracted to allow basically the goal is basically to reduce uh, polygons into the atmosphere right okay so uh from the superheater then it comes into this piping as you can see over here it comes here then this is the high pressure section as you can see the smaller size of the turbine blades and basically it impinges on the shaft and starts to rotate right so once it impinges on the shaft then it goes below this and goes back into another section of the reheater right so the reheater piping there's one that is basically dedicated for the boiler and there's another reheater section that is dedicated for the return scheme that flows back to be reheated before it comes back into the intermediate piping section so this is the intermediate piping section as you can see over here right and the size of the blade is graded so that it can reduce the speed and also attract more volume of steam as it falls because here is basically you know the high the, the pressure is very high right so you want a bigger uh, space for it to, uh, to basically fall so this is the intermediate uh, section piping section of uh, uh the steam turbine so it hits the blade here then it continues um basically the rotation has already been started by the high pressure section right then once uh you know it comes back and it hits the intermediate pressure section the rotation continues to maintain it right and uh, basically it has a governance you know on on the piping that basically controls uh, the speed you know so the turbine has uh, something they call governor right and uh, it has uh, basically steam valves and uh, but uh, that steam valve uh, one of the biggest that I've seen can be the size of a huge building yes yes, yes, yes. Those, those, those steam valves are huge for especially nuclear power plants right okay so so as it flows here then it goes back right then flows back this is a uh, their low pressure section so the low pressure section consists of two sides right it comes in here then basically the steam hits the blades hits the blades and continue the rotation right okay so the whole of this section is the steam turbine and the section this section is the generator right and like i told you the shaft of this steam turbine is couple to the rotor of the generator right and uh, there's a coupling here right and uh, basically various uh, stages of uh, bearings you know actually one of some of the largest uh, generators can have about uh, 14 you know bearings so that that can use that can tell you how big a size uh, these uh, generators are okay so this is the generator basically is coupled to the steam turbine and uh, basically it generates uh, electric power from that okay so like I explained in the previous slide, right? This is the high pressure section of the steam turbine, right? And the turbine blades are very small, right? Okay, so, and the steam flow here, it comes very dry, about 95% dry. Mass flow rate is very high, in very huge piping. So, that's why you know you have that you know uh, size of uh, blades, right? Okay, so it comes in here, it hits the blades, then it starts rotating, right? Then it goes back, goes to to the reheater pendants that is in the boiler. Then it comes back into the intermediate pressure section. Then it hits the turbine blades, right? Continue right? sustaining the rotation. Then it goes back. Then crosses over so this is what what they call crossover right they call it a crossover it crosses over to the low pressure section so this is the crossover you know so you hear that 
where then uh, crossover. So the steam basically goes from here to here into the low pressure section and basically uh, hits the turbine blades and continues to sustain uh, the rotation. Okay, so much uh, bigger picture of uh, the turbine blades, how they look like. Okay, so this is the high pressure section. This is what they call the turbine shaft. So that shaft goes all the way, you know. So this is the intermediate section, pressure section. This is the intermediate pressure section, the high pressure section, and the low pressure section, right? And from the intermediate pressure section to the high pressure section, it goes through a crossover pipe, right? The steam, once it hits the blade here, then it goes from here to here, okay? And this is the low pressure section. Then from here, it comes down into a condenser. The steam collapses, they call it, that's, that is the technical word they use. The steam collapses into the condenser. So once it gets into the condenser, it is about 60% uh, saturated with water and about 40%, I'll say 70% and 30% steam, right? And once uh, it gets uh, into contact with the cooling water, that flows in the walls of the condenser. The condenser also has a closed loop pipe uh, cooling that basically has cooling water, right? So once uh, the steam gets in into contact with it, it basically forms pure water. And uh, that water has to be pumped. So it is called a condensate heat pump motor. So there's a motor here that pumps the water, right? Condensate heat pump uh, motor. It pumps it, then it goes into a boiler feed pump motor, right? So the boiler feed pump motor is the one that pumps water, the condensate water, into the walls of the boiler. Okay, to complete the cycle. So this is a much closer picture of how the turbine blades look like. As you can see, it's in the form of aeropole, right? You can see over here, just like a um, uh, basically, you know, an airplane, you know, airport, right? So, aerodynamic shape. So, the goal is basically to create that aerodynamic shape and also to reduce uh, resonances and also to minimize, uh, you know, other, you know, sound and also there's something they call soil particle erosion, right? Soil particle erosion, right? You know, because as you have steam that is basically impinging on these surfaces, right? The steam itself has uh, sediments that are part of it, right? And that sediment could erode the surfaces of these turbine blades. So these turbine blades are shaped in such a way that it minimizes that uh, um, soil particle erosion. And also there's something they call root blade cracking, right? Uh, you know, these uh, blades are basically, you know, um, embedded in the shaft, right? And uh, with time they crack, right? So it is basically, the shape is basically created in this form so that it minimizes all those uh, um, cracking that is basically, you know, developed uh, with time, you know, as uh, the turbine, uh, uh, steam turbine, you know, is in operation. Okay, so, like I told you, this is the tip of the blade, right? The tip of the turbine blade. And you see the form of aerofoil, right? Aerodynamic, creating that aerodynamic high efficiency shape right so you see that the high pressure steam comes in here right and you have uh, the rotation part so this is the blade that is rotating and this is the stationary part right so this basically is the one that helps to basically uh, reduce the pressure of the steam and allows this rotational part to basically gain that excessive momentum to rotate at the faster rate, right? So that explains it. This high pressure steam comes in here, right? You have the, st uh, the stationary part that basically slows the speed of the high pressure steam. As such, that sudden slowness of that speed, that energy is all transferred into this rotational part, and basically that. Uh, energy basically is gained as basically mechanical energy, right? So from thermal 
energy changes into mechanical energy through that uh, rotation of the blades. Okay, so in the uh, midst of uh, the fluids, right? Okay, so this is how it look, looks like. So as you can see, remember I told you that this is the blade, right? And this is how they are embedded in the shaft, right? And this is the tip of the blade, right? And that tip, that shape, the airfoil, just, I mean, this is quite similar to the shape of the wings of an aircraft, right? And why is that shape? You know, why is that, you know, the wings of an aircraft is shaped in the form of uh, basically an airfoil? The, create, the goal is to create that aerodynamic uh, lift, right, on the side of our um, aircraft. But this one, um, for the side, for, you know, uh, terminal blades uh, in comparison, the goal is to create that aerodynamic rotation, right? And that aerodynamic uh, uh, transfer of energy. So, as you can see over here, this is where the uh, blade cracking takes place, right? With time, you know. So, uh, the shape is basically angled, right? And curved in certain parts, right? So, that itself is part of the mythology that is put into this type of blades uh, so that uh, basically it doesn't uh, develop uh, you know uh, roots uh, cracking they call it uh, roots uh, cracking blade cracking right okay and uh like i said there's something called solar particle erosion right and uh, basically that can erode uh, the surfaces of this uh, blade so that is why the blades are at an angle to the steam flow so that uh, the steam basically flows directly you know there's something called angle of attack right you know just like an aircraft you know <laughs> the wings okay angle of attack you know so similarly you know that is how the, the blades are arranged so that you know once uh, the steam hits it basically it gains that uh, aerodynamic uh, uh, length and uh, you know aerodynamic efficiency for that rotational energy to be generated to uh, create uh, the required uh, mechanical energy okay so as you can see over here right okay you have uh, the rotational blades and you have the stationary part right okay so you will see that uh, inside the turbine the rotational part and the stationary part are in very, uh, in very close proximity right okay so like i told you that uh, the steam comes in and the stationary part is the one that slows the velocity the mass flow rate and also there's a reduction in temperature and pressure the pressure is very high very dry steam and i'm telling you that steam i mean one time you know when i was uh, you know there was uh, this other uh, when i was working in this uh, one of these uh, uh, facilities uh, that utilizes a uh, steam uh, turbine right at another facility one of the piping that carries the high pressure steam basically uh, cracked and that amount of steam was able to basically sever someone into pieces into two basically uh, let me put it that way so that's to tell you how much pressure flows in that piping okay so what this stationary part is the one that impedes the velocity of that flow of steam and as a result the temperature also you know reduces the pressure also reduces right but that reduction of velocity that reduction of temperature and also is transferred into the rotational part so the rotational part is the one that gains that uh, drag or reduction in the flow velocity and temperature and gains that amount to gain that excessive rotation okay so cross-sectional view of the blades right so as you can see over here this is the low pressure section and they gradually increase right mm -hmm. and like i told you that uh, there's a reason why they are arranged in that increasing height is because the steam comes in here right 
it's going to hit these blades right over here so you want that space to be you know the blades has to be smaller so that uh, it can allow more steam to dwell over here and to be transferred over here now let's talk about reheating remember i made mention about reheating right okay so now let you know they say pictures are worth more than thousand words right okay so this is how the reheating uh, pendants, the pendants look like in a boiler, right? So the pendants are more of a piping that hangs in the middle section of the boiler. Uh, for the reheater, for the superheater, the superheater is right at the very tip top of the boiler, right? So these are basically piping, right? That goes in, uh, you know, zigzag, you know, um, manner, right? Okay, so as you can see over here, it comes in here, uh, right? Goes in, gets reheated, then comes back. Comes back, right? So that is uh, the reheating section, utilizing the uh, flue gas energy, the heat from the flue gas, the thermal energy from the flue gas is recovered, right? Because you are wasting that amount of heat that goes out of the stack, right? Through the electrostatic precipitation system, right? So you need to utilize that amount of heat that is being sent, you know, to the atmosphere. So that uh, flue gas is basically fed around this uh, piping, which basically the steam gains uh, that uh, energy from the piping and it to increase its temperature to get it ready for the uh, next section of uh, the steam turbine that is the intermediate pressure section right okay so once it completes uh, the intermediate pressure section it goes through this crossover and into the low pressure section before the steam comes down and collapses into the condenser once it gets into the condenser remember the condenser has a uh, water cool cold water flowing through the tubes right then once it gets into contact it forms a uh, water and uh, basically, um, the water is uh, pumped by a conductive pump, you know, to, to uh, basically repeat the cycle. So, the power plant, uh, basically, power generation is uh, basically a com uh, complete cycle that has always is in a closed loop. Okay, so with that, uh, you know, comes to the end of my presentation, and uh, I've given you a presentation of how electrical power generation is achieved utilize the biomass energy and what are the forms of biomass energy that is a uh, trash right so the trash from households trash from industrial facilities trash from commercial facilities right trash from agricultural facilities after harvesting right the leaves the corn, the, the husk, you know, for, for instance, in the corn, the husk, all of these basically are forms of biomass energy. And also, if you have a timber, big woods, big trees, right? Okay, so the purpose of this timber and big trees, right, is to basically, you know, um, harvest them and basically utilize uh, the needed section for uh, to make uh, basically different forms of wood uh, for cabinets etc whatever you know wooden uh, product that uh, uh, needs to be made the leftovers the shavings right after sawing and all those things and also after trimming the trees uh, the timber the big trees right all those shavings are needed those are all part of biomass biomass right matter of fact i matter of fact, even even used ties used ties can be basically shaped into pieces and compacted and other forms of chemicals can be added to make it basically a fuel for the boiler i used to work in a boiler uh, you know a, a power plant that basically was you know biomass and i was utilizing basically uh tight shapes and that has been basically Put into several, you know, shavings, and uh, basically 
uh, other additional um, uh, chemicals have been added in the basement that is utilized uh, for the boiler to generate the required uh, thermal energy. Right. So, uh, this is the form of um, you know um, biomass energy, and that is part of the renewable energy, right? Energy, right? Basically, you know what we are, we are doing is uh, basically we are harvesting all those and basically reducing the amount of carbon dioxide that uh, these all these plants uh, absorb, right? And at the same time, we are burning those into the atmosphere and uh, in a carefully controlled manner. So basically, there it is a net zero. So this is what they call net zero, right? Right? You are reducing the amount of uh, carbon dioxide that is being absorbed by all these plants and all those things, right? Then you are emitting, right? So you end up with a zero carbon emission. Okay, so this is my YouTube channel and uh, has uh, a lot of uh, presentation materials and uh, don't forget to go out there and uh, basically take a look at uh, all those presentation ma materials right okay so if you like my presentation don't forget to select the like button and don't forget to share 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 and also if you want to subscribe to my channel which has tons of uh, information for you as a young engineer as a developing engineer as a mid-career engineer as an experienced engineer as a consulting engineer you need a google account Google account, a Gmail account, then you can subscribe to this channel and any other channel that uh, you want to um, uh, subscribe. But well, that comes to the end of my presentation. And uh, thank you so much for your listening ears. And I look forward for more presentation, more presentation, right, coming at your service. With that, I say thank you so much.